Imagine if every article, video, or podcast you consumed was instantly summarized, tagged, and linked into a knowledge graph without you lifting a finger. Now imagine being able to chat with those connections directly and even discover new ones while you browse. All of this happens automatically in an app called Recall. But before we go further, Recall is sponsoring this video. I've actually never done a sponsored video on an app before, and it's not because no one asked, but because I don't put my name behind something I'm not actually using. And I use this because the problem it's solving is real. We are all consuming more information than ever, but the tools we've had so far haven't kept up. They were built for a world where you consume two or three things a day, not 10 or 20. And there's a lot that goes into capturing, organizing, and most importantly, making it all connected and easy to access. And that's where Recall comes in because it doesn't just solve one of these problems, it tackles all of them. So let's go through them one by one. And the first big feature of Recall actually happens before you even save anything. Because when you trigger Recall's browser extension on any piece of content like a video or an article, it'll give you an instant summary of it. And this summary also comes with timestamps so you can skip to the part that actually matters, which is perfect for those YouTube videos where the first useful bit shows up at minute 33. And that's great, but what's really cool is that you can immediately ask recall questions about the content itself. So if something isn't clear, you don't have to pause and dig around, you can just ask. And the AI responds based only on that specific video or article, not the entire internet, which makes the answers actually relevant. And if the chat surfaces something worth keeping, you can save that conversation so it's always tied to the original content. And normally, this is where the headache begins. You save something, and then you have to figure out tags, folders, connections, and how you ever find it again. But Recall does all of that automatically. Because now, not only do I have the summary and the actual content inside my database, but Recall analyzes it, tags it, and drops it into the right folder automatically. Then, and this is the crazy part, it'll scan my whole database, and if this new content is related to something I've saved before, it's going to link the two and show me that connection in a graph view. So every time you open a piece of content, you'll see its own local graph showing the direct links that it has. And as you add more and more to your database, you're going to find connections that you otherwise miss. It works a lot like Obsidian, except here, it's automatic. There's also the global graph view that maps your entire database base and you can go into any piece of content from here or filter by different topics or even different tags. But personally, I use the local graph view a lot more simply because it's passive. I just stumble upon it every time I add a new piece of content and a lot of times it brings up connections that I didn't even know were there. But recall isn't just about capturing and organizing. And I'm definitely saving the best for last, but before that, if we go into any piece of content, recall can actually quiz you on it. And this works on everything, even hour long videos. And you can also upload stuff you already have like a PDF file that you need to study and turn it into a quiz. This is a great feature and man do I wish I had this back in school. There's also a review tab and this quizzes you across your whole database. It uses spaced repetition so the more questions you get right the less often you'll see them. And you can also do this from the mobile app. You can be on the train, waiting in line, whatever and still quiz yourself straight from your phone. Not only that but you can also share content to it just like with the browser extension. It's not as feature rich as a desktop version but it does all that I would want to do on the go. And you can even and use it as a read it later app like Instapaper or Pocket. All right, so that's already a lot, but these next two features are what really takes recall to the next level. Okay, so normally when you're reading stuff online, chances are you run into topics and concepts that you've already seen in a different piece of content. But with recall, those connections get highlighted automatically. So if you're reading an article and you come across a term that already exists in your database, recall is going to highlight it and show it to you. This is huge because all of a sudden you're not just consuming content, you're seeing how it fits into everything you've already saved and strengthening the connections you've already made. And if there's a highlight that you don't want to see, you can disable it with one click. And you can also blacklist entire websites in the extension settings. Oh, and by the way, this all happens locally. Nothing is leaving the browser. Okay, so now for the best feature. Up until now, we've seen how you can chat with individual pieces of content, but Recall lets you chat with your entire knowledge base at once. That means you can find something specific you saved ages ago or have it pull together information across multiple notes or even entire folders. You can even filter it by tags. So if I only want insights from my health content, I can just type the at sign and choose that specific tag. This is like using ChatGPT, but only on the content you've already saved. So instead of pulling random answers from the internet, it's distilling your own knowledge, drawing connections, and surfacing links you'd probably otherwise miss. And so far, we've only been talking about saving content you find on the web. But you can also take your own notes directly inside Recall. They're also making improvements to the editor, so it's only going to get better. 
Now at this point, you might be thinking if this is a replacement for Obsidian or Notion or whatever else you're using for notes. And while it can be, I don't see it that way. I see it more as a compliment, a perfect one actually. Recall excels at capturing, connecting and resurfacing. I can throw in articles, podcasts and videos without hesitation and Recall will organize them, build links I'd never think of and even resurface them while I'm browsing. It also makes everything I consume searchable and discoverable with zero effort. And I'm fine using AI here because it's not touching my private notes or thoughts. It's processing other people's content and not my own. Obsidian on the other hand is the opposite. It's manual and deliberate. It forces me to slow down and structure ideas so my barrier to add stuff there is really high. But that's why the two work so well together. Recall for me at least is the wide net. It's the place where I capture freely and I let connections form automatically. And from there the best stuff gets promoted into Obsidian. So for me Recall isn't about turning knowledge into structured thought. That's Obsidian's job. Recall is about making everything I consume searchable, connected, and constantly resurfaced without effort. And what makes me optimistic about Recall is that it isn't just another AI tool rushing out half-baked features and disappearing a few months later. The team behind it actually listens to the users. They've got a roadmap and the updates aren't gimmicks. They're meaningful features that people ask for. It's also one of the few AI tools that doesn't feel like a flashy demo. It feels finished, stable and built for real use. But of course, there are some limitations. The first is that there's no support for Safari, only Chrome and Firefox. Second, if you import a bunch of notes from other tools, you'll have to open each one to generate the connections. It's not a deal breaker and in a way, I actually appreciate it as it makes me think about what's actually worth keeping. Another one is that while you can export everything to Markdown, the graph structure and semantic links don't carry over. That's not unique to Recall. There isn't a universal standard for connections, but it does mean that you lose some of the magic if you ever move away. It's also worth noting that the free tier is pretty limited and that all of your content lives on their servers. So who's Recall actually for? If you're a knowledge worker, a researcher, a writer, I don't have to tell you how good this is. It's perfect for keeping track of the endless articles and papers you'll be going through and resurfacing the ones you'd otherwise forget. If you're a student, this is basically cheating. The ability to quiz yourself on what you're learning as well as keeping an entire database just focused on material you're given in lectures, that's just ridiculously good. But it's also perfect for people like me who just consume a lot of content online. Even if you're someone who doesn't take notes at all, all, Recall is still worth using because at the end of the day, this is not a note-taking app. It's a memory app and it's the lowest effort where I found to actually remember what I consume. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know I rarely talk about AI tools because honestly this space is a mess and the majority of these companies are just gimmicky and disappear within months. Recall on the other hand feels finished, stable and actually useful. Very easy recommendation. I also spoke with a co-founder and got you 30% off until the end of October. Just use the code SERGIO30 at checkout or click the link in the description. And if you want to keep going down the rabbit hole of actually useful tools, the next one I'd recommend is Raycast. And I went over how I use it in this video right here. So I'll see you there.